Make sure you check down in the description below so you can find out how to enter into my Road to 1,000 subscriber giveaway. We're 21 subs away right now, so we're getting close. We're going to have an epic party once I hit that milestone. Also, if you're interested in comic book mystery boxes, you can find out how to purchase a small town collectible comic book mystery box and how to get a discount code with Street Level Hero LA, save 10% off your order, and raise some money for a great cause. What's going on everybody? It's another beautiful day here in the hills of Eastern Kentucky and today we're going to talk about the first appearances and key issues for the greatest day of the week. New comic book day September 8th 2021. So let's get started. I'm Jimmy Don Kerr and this is the Small Town Collectibles YouTube channel. Before we get into talking about the key issues and the covers and the first appearances this week, I want to ask you if you haven't already, hit that subscription button, turn on that notification bell so that you get notified when I put out new content. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up, and if you don't care, leave a comment below, let me know if you like the video, let me know if there's any first appearances or key issues that I'm missing or anything that you're reading that maybe I should be checking out. I say it every week want this video to be a discussion between myself and the community about the new books that are coming out this week. All right, with all that out of the way, let's jump into our first category this week, and that's the covers. So covers this week, got a few for you. Um, the first one is Masters of the Universe, Revelation number three, the cover A by Dave Wilkins. Now I am a He-Man homer, love He-Man, but all these Revelation covers, I've really, really dug. And on this one, you've got Skeletor with the, with the staff, and you've got Evil Lynn standing behind him. Um, just love, love, love that cover. And like I said, I've loved most of the covers for this current run of Heat Man. Next up from DC is Batman Fear State Alpha number one. Now, Fear State Alpha came out last week, but they dropped a cover C, cover C this week from Francisco Matina. This is a full card stock cover. And it's just got this wicked image of Scarecrow in the background and kind of Batman in the middle of it. I don't know. It's just dope. I love, love, love that cover. Now, I am a Matina homer. Like, I like a lot of Matina's covers. This one really hits the mark for me this week. We have another Batman cover on the list this week. And this is Batman number 112, the cover C incentive by Lucio Perillo. Uh, this is a Fear State tie-in, of course. Um, and this cover is inspired by the NES Castlevania game packaging from 1986. So a little bit of nostalgia for me back when I did play video games. I don't really play today, but back when I did, Castlevania was one of those games that I played. And so I really, really dig this cover. Another book from DC this week is Nice House on the Lake number four. And this cover, uh, B variant by Tiffany Terrell. Yeah, man, it really hits the mark. You know, you kind of got the guy standing on the deck or I guess on maybe overlooking the lake and you've got these ships and all this stuff on fire and everything nice house on the lake is on fire right now and this cover is too. So yeah, if you, if you dig covers, if you dig nice house on the lake, this might be one you may want to check out. And wrapping up our covers this week, probably a little bit of a guilty uh, pleasure on my part is Superman, Son of Kal-El, number one, the cover G, second printing incentive, by John Timms. Now, I've got listed here on the screen, or shown here on the screen, is the Virgin uh, cardstock variant. There is one with trade on it that you can pick up for about 33, or excuse me, for the normal price, like $3.59. This one's running about $22 over on Midtown, but I love this cover. You've got Jonathan, it's kind of, just puts you in mind of the original Superman movies, you know, when Christopher Reeves is kind of flying around the earth, and you got the whole, I'm just doing it, right? Like, you know, Flying around the earth kind of gives you that look. I really dig this cover, especially with Jonathan uh, taking the helm of Superman. I'm, I'm really excited about that title and about him as a character. And the nostalgia of this cover kind of brings me back to my, my youth and watching the original Supermans. So yeah, this is a definite must have for me and one I'll definitely be grabbing this week. All right, guys, that is it for the covers. Let's jump into our second printing category for the week. And of course, I'm just going to jump over and start with the Superman Son of Kal-El number one. I just got done talking about that one um, in the cover uh, category. But yeah, it's the second printing this week. It's one I'm definitely grabbing. I dig the, uh, 
the trade cover. I also dig that virgin cover that I just showed you guys. So, yeah, Superman, Son of kal number one, second prints out this week. Then we have the Me You Love in the Dark, number one. Uh, that second print, there's actually two. Uh, you've got your standard second print, and you also have a 1 in 20 incentive variant by Jorge Corona. Both nice covers. Uh, first issue of that book was great. Number two is actually out this week. Um, so, yeah, but you get this second printing of the Me You Love in the Dark. I think that, if that's one you dig, might be a good one to grab. Next up from Marvel, we've got Star Wars, War of the Bounty Hunters, Jabba the Hutt number one. Of course, this is the second printing of that original book that came out in this War of the Bounty Hunters storyline. This is one of the books I actually read when I was still reading that uh, storyline. I got kind of bored with it. Just didn't really feel like it was going anywhere. But this particular book introduced a new character, and you've got that character on the cover here for this second print. So if you're into Star Wars and you like the second printings, this may be one you want to grab. And then wrapping up our second prints for the week is really one of my, I really enjoyed the read on this one, and that is the last book you'll ever read, number one. And the second print on that book comes out this week. It looks just like the cover A, just kind of a different color, or the, you know, the original first print, just a different color. Um, this may be one I really, really dug, the first one, and this is maybe one I'm gonna be on the lookout for, but if you like the second prints and you enjoyed that book, the second prints out this week. All right, guys, that wraps up all the second prints for this week. Let's jump on over into our key issues. Now, when I start out the key issues every week, I, I like to tell you about a few books that are coming out that I'm not necessarily going to highlight with pictures, but that I'm reading and I'm really enjoying. And this week, there's a bunch of them. Um, Blue Gold, number two, the first one. It's kind of like a buddy cop with Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. Great, great first issue. Number two's out this week. Then we've got Suicide Squad Get Joker number two, and the first issue of this book was my favorite read that week that came out. It was absolutely phenomenal, kind of highlighted Red Hood, um, who I dig, I really like Red Hood, but I can't wait to get this one. Um, then you've got two of my favorite titles ongoing right now, which is Suicide Squad number seven and Swamp Thing number seven. Swamp Thing, if you're not reading anything DC, say you're a Marvel fan, but you wouldn't care to read a DC title, Swamp Thing is, is legit, like it's a great, great read, and one of my favorite books right now. Then you've got the Six Sidekicks of Trigger Keaton, number four. Love this book, it's hilarious. I wish he had more than Six Sidekicks so this one could keep going. But yeah, Six Sidekicks of Trigger Keaton is great. The Me You Love in the Dark, as we talked earlier, number two's coming out this week. And the last book you'll ever read, number two, is out this week as well. So that's just a few books that I've read that I really dug, and I'm looking forward to the new issues coming out this week. And if you're on some of those, great. And if you're not, maybe something you want to check out. All right, so let's jump on over into our key issues here. Start with DC. Uh, the first one this week is Green Lantern 2021, annual number one. And in this issue, Jessica Cruz joins the Sinestro Corps. So this could be a key issue down the road, especially with the HBO Max stuff. You know, they're talking about doing Green Lantern. I suspect that Jessica Cruz could be one of the characters that shows up there. Um, and as a storyline, you can maybe see her joining the uh, Sinestro Corp. Could make this a key book. Then from DC, we've got The Nice House on the Lake, number four. Of course, written by James Tenyon and illustrated by Alvaro Martinez Bueno. One of the hottest books out there right now from DC and their black label. Yeah, can't wait for this one to come out. It's one of my favorite reads right now as well, along with Swamp Thing. Um, yeah, Nice House on the Lake number four for sure is a pickup for me. Okay, so that's the only two books for DC. So let's jump on over to Marvel. And in Marvel, we've got Avengers, Tech On number two. In this book, the Avengers encounter Venom in Yokohama, but he's supersized, supercharged, and out of control. That kind of sounds fun. Um, I did read the first Avengers Tech On, uh, number one. It was pretty good. Um, not necessarily a big Marvel reader per se, but the first one was pretty good. Um, and then <laughs> Venom being supersized, supercharged, and out of control. Yeah, I'm going to check that one out. Then we have Excalibur number 23. Now, the reason that I'm highlighting Excalibur number 23 in the key issues is because 9-11, the 20th anniversary of 9-11 is coming up. And this book has a backup story commemorating that anniversary. Um, it has Captain America and Spider-Man revisiting Ground Zero. 
The story is titled The Four Fives, a reference to an honor given to the firefighters who died in the line of duty. This is written by Joe Quinsada and illustrated by John Ramada Jr., the same creative team who released The Amazing Spider-Man number 36, 9-11 issue. So yeah, with that anniversary, if you're my age, you remember where you were. Um, I was 26 years old when 9-11 happened. So yeah, I remember it very well. I remember I was getting gas and I, I heard on the radio, you know, kind of like a breaking news alert um, and then went to work and then didn't do a thing that day but read online uh, about what was happening. So a sad day in our history. Um, you know, of course, always thoughts and prayers go out to those families and the first responders that died that day and for the folks who worked in the buildings that died that day. But yeah, if you want to check that out, it's one I'm definitely going to grab. There's a couple of options that have that backup story in, but Excalibur number 23 is the one I chose to highlight here. And then our last book for Marvel is Extreme Carnage Toxin number one. This story features the Toxin symbiote with host Bryn Waters, whose first appearance was in Planet of the Symbiotes number three. Now, there have been several of these, right? But this is the first time you've seen a character who has already, I guess, appeared in a book, and now they're bringing them out here um, in this one shot with Toxin. And so I kind of feel like maybe we're gonna see Bryn Waters as a continuing character. And so that's one of the books I'm kind of specking on right now is that Planet of the Symbiotes number three and his first appearance, and I'm definitely gonna grab this one as well. All right, so now let's jump over into our independent books this week, uh, key issue wise. You've got the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Last Ronin, number four, coming out this week. Uh, I really enjoyed the first three issues. My biggest complaint is that it takes so long in between issues for them to come out. A lot of times I feel like i got to go back and reread the first three now that I'm going to read number four. But it's been worth it. Um, each time I've done it, the story's good. And I'm not even that big of a Turtles fan, but the story's good. So from IDW, the Last Ronin, number four, is out this week. Then we're going to jump over to Mad Cave Studios with Bountiful Garden number one. And this has a pretty big synopsis, but uh, it really kind of stood out to me when I read it, so I'm going to read it to you. Uh, in the year 2200, a team of teenage scientists are sent on a terraforming mission to a distant planet. Selected as the best and brightest of their generation, architect Jonas, botanist Marnie, biologist Jane, engineer Anya, and Kamari and security detail Kurt are all put in cryostasis expected to wake up when it's time to prepare to land on their assigned planet. When they are awakened abruptly 10 years early, halted above a strange planet, the teens are tasked with trying to figure out why they're stalled or what stalled them. As they break into two teams, one tasked with fixing the ship, the other with exploring the unknown planet below, they're faced with an increasingly nightmarish scenario as they encounter a cosmic horror that no one seems to not only have attacked their ship, but have also lost their minds. So I really liked the way that read. Um, and I could see that being a TV show or a movie, you know, something like that. So Bountiful Garden number one from Mad Cave is a book I'm definitely gonna grab this week and give it a read. Then we're gonna jump over to Scout, one of my favorite publishers out there, and their title this week, Dancing with the Dragon number one. Synopsis on this one is Connor, Connor O'Sullivan is a hapless limo driver on the run from the triads. It probably wasn't the best idea to take over his dead customer's shady business. However, for a poor Irish immigrant trying to provide a better life for his girlfriend, it seemed to be too good to pass up. After some initial success, Connor thinks this is his ticket to living the American dream, but he has just been dancing with the dragon. So. I've said it on here many times, I like scout books, I like scout books like this. So Dancing with the Dragon number one is a definite key and a pickup for me this week. Then we'll slide over to Vault and this title kind of cracked me up with the synopsis on it kind of cracked me up. And this book is called Dead Box number one and it says, Welcome to the town of Lost Turkey where the main source of entertainment is a cursed DVD machine that seems to know more about the fate of its citizens than they do. So that's kind of campy, kind of silly, but if I can find that one, I'm probably going to pick it up and give it a read because I just find it amusing that a cursed DVD machine um, would be the main form of entertainment and just kind of see what kind of nonsense comes from that. So yeah, Dead Box number one uh, from Vault 
is a definite pick up and give a read before I purchase this week, but it may be something that you're interested in. So the last two issues on the key issues list this week both come from Dark Horse, and the first one is titled Last Flight Out Number One. The synopsis reads, with Earth rendered uninhabitable, humanity has chosen to evacuate to the stars. But with just 24 hours left until the last arc designed to evacuate Earth's residents, leave forever, its designer's estranged daughter goes missing. So I think that sounds cool. I don't know if you ever watched the show on uh, Netflix called The 100, but it kind of sounds like the reverse of that. You know, they had left Earth because it became uninhabitable because of a nuclear uh, explosion or war. So when this picks up, they're already in space. They've been up there for 100 years, and now they're running out of life support or whatever, and they got to get back to Earth. So this kind of is the flip of that where they're leaving. So I think this sounds cool. Um, Dark Horse generally gets a lot of love when it comes to uh, you know, potential movies or TV shows. And so Last Flight Out number one I think sounds good and has some potential spec value. And the last book this week is May's book number one. And this book is from the New York Times bestselling and Eisner Award winning Black Hammer creator Jeff Lemire. It's a story, um, or it says, a haunting comic series about family, mourning, and reality. And the synopsis reads like this. A lonely building inspector, still grieving the loss of his puzzle-loving daughter, receives a mysterious phone call one night from a girl claiming it's her and that she's trapped in the middle of a labyrinth. Convinced that this child is contacting him from beyond this world, he uses an unfinished maze from one of her journals and a map of the city to trace an intricate path through a different plane of reality on an intense and melancholy adventure to bring his daughter back home. The only way in is out. So yeah, that sounds cool to me. Now, and I like Jeff Lemire, I like Black Hammer. Um, I don't generally buy the Black Hammer comic books, but I have picked up the trades because I always hear they're good and they are. So I like his writing and I'm interested to check out this maze book. The premise of that sounds cool. And uh, yeah, so definitely Last Flight Out and this one are probably two of my favorite books this week as far as the synopsis go, and I can't wait to check out. Okay guys, that is all the key issues this week, so let's jump over into our first appearances for the week. Uh, the first one is Batman number 112, and this is the first cameo appearance of Peacemaker X. Now this 10 year run of Batman has had multiple first appearances, some that I, I don't think will stick. There's a few characters like Mir Miracle Molly, the clown hunter, that I think will. I'm, I'm not really jiving on the Peacekeeper, Peacekeeper X, but it's a first appearance, and if you collect first appearances, you've got this one in Batman 112. Then another Batman title, Batman The Adventures Continue Season 2, number 4. You get the first appearance of Muscle, a mercenary. Then Sensational Wonder Woman number 7. You get the first appearance of Nat Natalia Close, a famous socialite with a dark past. Then, of course, what's any list without, I said every week, without a Star Wars book, and in this one, you get Star Wars Adventures number nine. And this is the first appearance of Boba Fett in the Star Wars Adventures title. So not a first appearance per se, but in this particular title, it's the first time Boba Fett is showing up. So that could be cool if you're a Star Wars uh, collector as well as first appearance. That might be a good one to grab. Then you have Kazar, Lord of the Savage Land number one, where Kazar debuts new powers. You get the first cameo appearance of Poly Scion. And this book also has that backup story um, commemorating the 20th anniversary of 9-11. So we talked about, I think it was Excalibur earlier. Kazar has that as well. Then you have Shang-Chi number four, where you get the first appearance and origin of Jiang Li, Shang-Chi's mother, in what appears to be a retcon to the original introduction of an American version of the character from Special Marvel Edition number 15 in 1974. And wrapping up the first appearances this week is another book I'm pretty excited to read. That's Black Manta number one. Um, and in this book, it introduces two, uh, actually two new characters, one a hero named Torrid and one a villain called Devil Ray. So yeah, this is a new book. It kind of comes off the Aquaman 80th anniversary special. Uh, with this new Black Mana title. I dig Black Mana as far as the way he looks as a villain. I've always liked him. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to check this one out uh, and I get a couple of new characters as well. 
Okay, guys, that is it this week for the first appearances, key issues, uh, video. I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me for just a little while. Um, again, want to make this video a conversation between myself and the community about the new books coming out each week. Um, and yeah, I, I just always enjoy it. So make sure you let me know down in the comments below if there's any first appearances I missed, any key issues, anything you're reading that maybe I should be checking out. All right, guys, that's it. Remember to look down in the description below to find out how to get entered in that Road to 1,000 subscriber giveaway. You're going to be giving away a ton of prizes. If you're not already, make sure you sub up to the channel and turn on that notification bell. Hope you guys have the greatest new comic book day ever. As I always in these things, until next time.